Ah, uh, it's time for another math. Easy solution. Uh, Terran discuss further into conic sections and polar coordinates, and now look further at the unified theorem, and now go over the proof for the hyperbola. So let's just jump right in. So in my previous videos, recall that I covered the proof of the unified theorem for conic sections in regards to the parabola and the ellipse in my previous video, so make sure to watch that. And in this video, I will prove that it is indeed applicable for hyperbolas. So first off, recall the conventional definition of a hyperbola and its formulation in standard Cartesian or rectangular coordinates. And uh, this is from my earlier video, recall the definition is that a hyperbola is the set of all points in a plane, the difference of whose distances from two fixed points F1 and F2, called the foci, is a constant. So it would look something like this, so here's a set of all points in black right here, this is the hyperbola. And then if you have two foci, F1 and F2, and then a distance from here to here, so the distance from here to here uh, minus the dis difference from here to here is going to be uh, always constant. So the difference in the distances from a, any point to the two foci, those d difference in distances, it's hyperbola when uh, this is uh, constant. And uh, make sure you watch my earlier video and uh, on the definition of it and where I proved that the equation, so recall the equation of a horizontal, uh, hyperbola in standard form, so I derived this in Cartesian or um, uh, rectangular coordinates. So we'll get something that looks like this, x squared over a squared minus y squared over b squared equals to 1, where the foci are plus or minus c and 0. This is centered about the origin there, 0, 0. And also where uh, c squared equals a squared plus b squared. And recall this was from, the, uh, from defining b squared as c squared minus a squared and where a squared are the vertices over here, a zero like that, and then we have the, the foci over here, so this is f2, uh, I'll call this f1, like that. And then the asymptote lines are y equals plus or minus a, b like this, I mean b, b over a, x, uh, and goes down a negative like that. So again, make sure to watch that uh, earlier video if you haven't already to get caught up on it. So now let's recap on the unified theorem for conic sections, which I covered in my earlier videos, and like always, always go over a recap. And uh, here is the unified theorem. So let F be a fixed point called the focus. Uh, yeah, it's called the focus. And L be a fixed line, which is called the directrix in a plane. Let E be a fixed positive number called the eccentricity then the set of all points P in the plane such that the distance PF divided by the distance PL is equal to E, which is the eccentricity, that is the ratio of the distance from F to the distance uh, from L is a constant E, and this is a conic section when that is constant. And the conic is an ellipse when E is less than one, which I proved in my earlier video, and uh, a parabola if E equals to one, which I again proved in my earlier video, and now I'll do this proof right here where a for a par, uh, hyperbola if e is greater than 1 and MES note the eccentricity is always positive since it is just a ratio of the distances which are just uh, taken always to be positive hence absolute value sign so the theory or the theorem is illustrated below graphically so if we have a point or a set of all points like this it's going to look like that and there's a focus here say a p, a point p on this uh, set of all points then we have a fixed line uh, L called the directrix. Then the ratio of the distance to the focus divided by the distance to the directrix PF over PL is equal to E and it's constant. So that's how it is visually like that. So all we have is a focus and a line as opposed to a two foci in the conventional definition here. So what I'm going to do in this video, I'm going to prove that uh, this is in fact the exact same. Well, we'll get the exact same in Cartesian when we convert this into Cartesian, this theorem, or find a formulation for it in Cartesian coordinates. And also recall that the motivation behind the above theorem is that it can be written in a simple formula when using polar coordinates and setting the focus at the origin or pole, and basically a simple equation that describes all three uh, parabolas, ellipses, and hyperbolas. So and here is that theorem in, in terms of a simple polar equation. A polar equation of the form r equals e times d divided by 1 plus or minus e cosine theta, or r equals e d divided by 1 plus or minus e sine theta, depends on how you um, 
yeah, how you've uh, arranged the uh, directrix and focus and actually yeah, how you arrange the directrix I mean so this represents a conic section with eccentricity E and, and the focus at the origin or the pole of in polar coordinates the conic is an ellipse of E is less than 1 a parabola if E is greater than 1 I mean a equal to 1 and a hyperbola or, or a hyperbola if E is greater than 1 and the following figures illustrate the different polar equations for various conics which I covered in my earlier videos uh, why we get a uh, different one here. So this is going to be if x equals to d is on the positive on the right side for the directrix. We get a plus here, plus e cosine theta. If it's on the negative, we get a minus. And then on the flip side, if it's a vertical uh, opening up vertically like this, and where y equals d is positive directrix, we get a plus e sine theta. This one's going to be minus when this is at the bottom there, negative. So again, make sure to watch my earlier videos. Put the link in the description below. And now let's look at the proof of a unified conic theorem for a hyperbola where E is greater than 1. So first off, to save some time, recall from my earlier, earlier video on the proof for ellipses that for the general case where E is not, not equal to 1, just to gra draw uh, graphically, just in a more general way so it counts for both. Uh, we can convert the polar coordinates expression of the unified theorem into an expression that resembles that for ellipses and hyperbolas in Cartesian or rectangular coordinates. Hashtag amazing. So make sure to watch my earlier video on ellipses, which I covered all this. I'm just going you know, where I left off at uh, this point here. So what I did was I set the directrix at x equals to d like this. There's a set of all points. And then uh, write this point in polar coordinates is r, r theta or x, y. And then you have, a, there's the ray R, there is the theta uh, angle like that. And then y, the y component is going to be just R sine theta using um, trigonometry, just by definition of sine. And also uh, x is equal to R cosine theta. Then the distance PF is going to be like this. PF is going to be just R. And PL from here to the directrix is going to be the total distance D uh, subtracted by uh, this uh, x component or the r cosine theta so pl equals to d minus r cosine theta so from here what I uh, obtained in the ellipses proof so make sure to, again to watch that it's pretty in-depth <laughs> a whole bunch of algebra so we can write this in terms of uh, like this r equals e times d minus r cosine theta and you can see this is just e equals to r divided by uh, pl d uh, minus r cosine theta. I just moved it around. So we get something like this and we can uh, move it forward and we get yeah, converting it into um, into Cartesian or rectangular coordinates and uh, but, but first squaring it because this is related the Pythagorean theorem relates the polar coordinates to the Cartesian so there's the r r squared equals x squared plus y squared so we square it both sides so we get x squared is r squared equals x squared plus y squared equals e squared and then d minus x all squared this is again number that's just x over here and then from there <laughs> a whole bunch of algebra later and completing the square I uh, show that we obtain this formula which is x plus d e squared divided by 1 minus e squared all squared divided by d squared e squared 1 minus e squared and then all squared there and then plus y squared divided by d squared e squared 1 minus e squared and this all equals to 1 and this uh, does in fact resemble a hyperbola or ellipse because remember these are just constants so but in this case uh, for a hyperbola so in my earlier video I went from here then they checked for the case where e is less than 1 but in this case let's look at when e is greater than 1 and that is in fact a hyperbola so if e is greater than 1 then 1 minus e squared is less than 0 and we have or a uh, race that we have and the above formula represents a hyperbola so we could see it right here so if e is greater than 1 then if we square both sides we get e squared is greater than 1 squared just equals to 1 and now what we could do is move this over to there so subtract it on both sides so we get a 0 is greater than 1 minus uh, e squared in other words this is negative so this is negative I'll just uh, box this like this so then yeah so then this term right here is going to be negative if it's negative yeah so if it's negative the difference now what we're gonna look at here is this 1 minus e squared this is gonna be negative 
Uh, this one here, this whole thing is going to be positive. This one's going to be a, mo a negative value there. So what we'll do now is, so thus, we could set the constants like this. You know, or uh, comma, thus set a squared equals to the bottom one there. Because we want to make it look like the conventional uh, definition for in rectangular coordinates. So d squared. This is equals to d squared e squared 1 minus e squared all squared. So that's this part right there. That is just a squared. And now this part here, because this is negative, we're not squaring this one. So 1 minus e squared is going to be negative. What we'll do is I'll set this like this. And I'll do negative b squared equals to, and then just write that one there. So I'll put it as negative. So d squared e squared and then divide this out and what we get is a 1 minus e squared like that. So we can box this all out and this is going to be uh, this is negative b squared. Yeah, Because we want the b squared always, it's always positive, a squared is always positive. And now also just make a note right here, we could relate negative b squared to a squared that is because uh, this one is just equal to this, but then uh, we multiply by 1 minus e squared. So that in other words, let's put a, a bracket note. Negative b squared is just equal to, yeah, this is exactly a squared, but we're multiplying it by a 1 minus e squared. So we go 1 minus e squared times it by a squared. Because you can see here, if you have 1 minus a, uh, e squared times a squared, this just cancels. And then we just get that over there. Yeah, so that is what we have. I'll just finish circling this. And now lastly, what we'll do is this part right here, again, that's going to be a negative, but we want to add a positive term. So we're going to write this as negative h. Uh, yeah, just negative h like that, not the squared. So that represents a typical shifted hyperbola. And I'll show you all this. So then we set negative h equals 2. So that's d e squared. d e squared 1 minus e squared like this. And I'll box this out like this. And also now here, note what we have here. Note that uh, this is negative, so then thus negative h is going to be negative or less than 0. So if we move this over to the other side, we get, well, h is greater than 0. So h is positive. Just uh, put a note like that again. And here, so we'll make another note, uh, MES note. We defined uh, negative h because, uh, as negative h because the standard shifted conics formula includes the term x minus h squared. And unlike for ellipses, h is greater than 0 in this case. So make sure to watch my earlier video. Uh, but in that case, it was a bit uh, mixed up at h less than 0. Just to make it look like this x minus h, just because uh, my calculus book go, it does it that way. So anyways, so in fact, this above here, once we do this all, it is of the form a, of a shifted hyperbola with center at h and 0. So when we implement all those in there, then this is going to be instead of plus and be a minus. So what we end up having is x minus h all squared, then the bottom is going to be a squared, then we have a minus because of the replacing it with b squared, minus b squared at the bottom. So we have minus like that equals to 1, and this is just a shifted hyperbola, and you could scroll all the way back up here. Let me just scroll all the way back here. So here is the standard form like this. This is an unshifted one, so x squared over a squared minus y squared over b squared and it looks something like this. But then we have the minus h, so it's shifted to the right by h. So it's going to look exactly like that. So that's the thing. We have a minus as opposed to a plus for ellipses. So very, very interesting stuff. And if you were to graph this out, it would look something like this. I'll draw this all the way across here. This is the x. This is the y. I'll just draw the directrix here. This is the uh, this is the L or the X or, or yeah this is the X equals to D line which is the directrix like that and uh, yeah this is a distance D across from the point here so this is going to be the focus and I'll write this as F uh, yeah just as a focus and now what we have is also write it on top uh, right here so uh, this is going to be 
the focus in terms of the unified theorem is going to look something like that. But then uh, this curve, this, this is exactly just in Cartesian just a hyperbola. So if we were to graph this in just uh, normal terms, it's going to go over to here as a center. So this is shifted to the right at h0 as a center. So we have now h0 is at this point. Right there, h0. And then so this is a focus. That's going to be the first focus. Or well, I'll prove that it is, in fact, the first focus. I'll just write it as focus like that. And then it's going to be, remember, that's the center. So it's going to look something like this. And then on this case, it's going to go all the way across on the other side. All right, so this is how it looks like. And the conventional one has two foci. The uh, unified theorem just has one there. But I'll show you that it's, in fact, defined exact same. So recall that in the conventional Cartesian theorem for hyperbolas, the foci are located at distance c from the center of the hyperbola such that so uh, such that as above, I, I wrote it as c squared equals to a squared plus b squared. And here I've just quickly uh, scrolled up. So uh, remember this, this is c squared equals a squared plus b squared, like that. And it's a distance from the foci or distance c from the uh, center or the origin. Uh, in that case, origin, but it's a c from the center. So then the, uh, so the conventional one should have from here to here should be a distance c, and also from here all the way to this, this foci right there, this should be uh, c. And this one's assuming that the foci and conventional is over there, but in fact it is the exact same as I'll show you here. So c squared equals a squared plus b squared. Uh, remember uh, a squared is just this one right here, d squared, e squared uh, over uh, 1 minus e squared all squared. So we can write this as d squared, e squared, 1 minus e squared all squared, like this. And then plus, and now what we have is a minus, is the uh, yeah, minus, um, because we define it as minus b squared equals to this. So we'll put the negative onto this side. So d squared, e squared, 1 minus e squared, d squared, e squared, 1 minus e squared. And now what we could do, this can be a, a minus, but also we could uh, uh, multiply by the common denominator here is going to be, well, 1 minus e squared all squared. So we multiply this top and bottom by 1 minus e squared. Uh, yeah, 1 minus e squared. And then this is going to be 1 minus e squared like that. Uh, and then we can have a common denominator. So then this top part is going to be d squared e squared subtracted by, multiply this inside there d squared e squared and subtract this one to this one's going to be positive. So plus d squared e to the 4, because that's an e squared multiplied by this one. Negatives cancel, be positive, but then we have an, uh, e, an extra e squared there. Then divide this by 1 minus, you know, 1 minus e squared all squared like that. And notice what we have, this will cancel with this. And now what we end up having is, well, we can have, now we have the c squared here equals to d squared e to the 4, 1 minus e squared all squared like that. And now what I'll do is, well, I'll square root both sides. So doing that, what we end up getting is c is equal to, this goes away, we'll have d e squared, and then this part right here, this is going to be 1 minus, uh, actually it's going to be plus or minus this. So we also have to include a plus or minus. Uh, and then we have an e yes, squared like this. But remember uh, this part right here, this is well less than 0 because of this 1 minus e squared, always less than 0. So we want uh, c is greater than 0. So what we want to do is, well, we want to pick this over there. Yeah, so then we'll just choose that uh, there so that we get c is greater than, uh, yes, yeah, c is greater than zero. So in other words, we want, i.e. we want c is greater than zero. And if this is less than zero, we uh, make it uh, just choose a negative so it becomes positive. And now what we end up getting is, well, a uh, d e squared, uh, yeah, minus d e squared, one minus e squared. So this is always gonna be greater than zero like this. But also recall this part right here, this is just uh, negative h. I mean, that's just h uh, right there. So remember, um, you know, scroll all the way up here. So d e squared uh, divided by 1 minus e squared is equal to negative h. In other words, h is equal to negative uh, that. So this is, in other words, this is just equal to h. 
like that. That's just equal to h. So what we have is thus c is equal to h. So in other words, when we scroll back up here, this equals to h. This equals to h. So this is the exact same one. This is f1. This can be our f2. This is the exact same place. Because this is just a difference. Uh, yeah, so the distance from the center is h. So uh, and this is in fact where the focus one for the or is, is the focus for the, the unified theorem using the, the directrix but then the conventional one the focus is still there so one of the focus is defined exactly as uh, the same in both uh, or means both exact same thing for both of the theorems yeah so then uh, this confirms as I just stated this confirms that the focus as defined in the above theorem means the same as the focus defined uh, conventionally for hyperbolas or at least one of the foci as shown in my earlier uh, videos or video and then uh, illustrated above. Also uh, we can see that the eccentricity itself can be written in terms of C and A. So recall, yeah, recall that above here C is equal to a negative D squared A squared 1 minus E squared. So C equals to uh, this is D squared E squared. Was it a D squared there? Actually, it's just d e squared, so I got that wrong. d e squared, 1 minus e squared, and there's a negative sign there. So just equals to negative h. Actually, a uh, positive h, uh, that's just h like that. So this equals to this, and also recall that a squared is equal to, uh, scroll above, a squared is just the uh, d squared e squared. So d squared e squared 1 minus e squared all squared and then if we square uh, root both sides here what we end up getting is bring this down we get an a is equal to plus or minus now those go away d e over 1 minus e squared and again here this is always going to be negative 1 minus e squared because e is greater than 1 uh, so what we have here is this is going to be less than zero. So we choose this one. So we want positive a. So then this just equals two uh, minus d e. Just we choose that one e squared. And also now what we could do here is look at this one looks exactly like this, but there's an extra e squared there. So what we'll do is multiply by e and divide it by e. So what we end up getting is a negative d e squared. 1 minus e squared times by 1 minus e. In other words, this part right here is just equal to c. Like this. That's just c. So this equals to c. Like that. Let's put it like that. This equals to c. So, I'll put the equal sign there. So this equals, this whole thing equals to c. In other words, we get a equals to c over e and move things around, move this over there, move this back. This way, what we end up getting is a e is equal to c over a. So this eccentricity is related to the distance in the conventional uh, theorem for the foci to the center divided by the vertices. It's very, very fascinating stuff. And uh, yeah, so I want to make another note here, MES note number one. I made sure to take the result from the square root operation uh, to obtain only positive values just by convention because we wanted C positive, A positive, so we also took the negative to make it positive because that's less than zero and this one took a negative because uh, this was less than zero. Uh, what would happen if we took the negative values or considered both? <laughs> Hashtag very, very interesting. Yeah, the square root uh, concept is actually very uh, fascinating when you start to think about it. Why would we always take positive and so, and so on and also we look up the principal square root uh, yeah, principal square root theorem and, and whatnot. I might cover those in later videos. Stay tuned for that very interesting stuff. And also MES note number two, we can also find the above eccentricity formula as follows. Yeah, so what we have here is, well, first off, recall that C squared equals to A squared plus B squared there, but also recall that B squared, scrolling up here, is equal to, well, negative B squared equals to one minus E squared A squared. So we just move the negative onto that side. So what we end up getting is we have c squared equals to a squared plus b squared. And then we also know that, well, uh, negative b squared is equal to uh, 1 minus e squared a squared. And the reason now is we can put this inside there. And then we'll have just e, a, and c. So we could solve for all of them, e, a, and uh, e like that. So we can write this in terms of e, c, and a. So we'll throw that in there, we get c squared equals to a squared, and this is going to be plus, um, 
I'm gonna plus and move this uh, negative onto that side so we get a uh, right here. This can be negative one minus. Put this in bracket. Negative one minus e squared a squared yeah a squared a squared like that and then this just equals to a squared yeah a squared minus I'll just write this down minus one e like this a squared we could just factor out the a squared so we get a squared one minus uh, one minus uh, plus e now so when we subtract that yeah because uh, this is going to be just factor out one like this so we factor that out just make it more complete it's going to be uh, like this a squared 1 minus 1, and then this is a minus there. Uh, this becomes positive e squared. The 1's cancel, and we're just left with uh, equals to a squared e squared. In other words, we get c squared equals to a squared e squared. And then we could take um, yeah the square root of all of them. And then what we get is c equals to plus or minus a e. And again, we want all positive, so we just take the positive of it. So C is always positive. And then, what, and then what we could do, this equals to A, E, and then separate for E. Move this on the other side. I'll just write this uh, equals to C. Let's move this over there and move the C over there. We get E equals to C over A, so like that. So yeah, very, very fascinating stuff. So we do that without needing to plug in A or uh, B like that. Uh, I mean, yeah, A or or C, the, the variables we had before. We just use it like this, so it's pretty interesting. So just a bit, um, I just wanted a bit more detail than I needed to, but I just wanted to cover it uh, exactly. So anyways, that's all for, let me just actually scroll one more note here. So uh, yeah, it's all for today, but I'll be going over some examples in later videos to better illustrate this theorem and its polar coordinates form, so stay tuned. Because uh, yeah, this is just uh, tedious converting it to Cartesian, uh, but it's very useful uh, just writing it in polar coordinates. That's why I did the unified theorem. And it was all for today. If you learn from this pretty extensive uh, proof video, and uh, make sure to watch the ellipse proof and the parabola one. The ellipse one's pretty intense. The parabola is pretty uh, quick. Uh, anyways, it's all for today. Um, Hopefully you learned and like always get down with these exact notes in the link in the description below as well as viewing these notes on Steam at follow me at MES and also make sure to check out my cool math and science forum and also uh, put yeah you know, or yeah just put uh, any links to any cool math or science related stuff you find as well as checking my math Discord channel. Anyways, that's all for today. Thanks for watching and stay tuned for another math e.